What is up, everybody? Today we are checking out Drifting Lands. This is going to be a quick first look at Drifting Lands. So, I've played a little bit of Drifting Lands already. Uh, you're going to see that I have a ship already in the game. This is a shmup that also has a deep story and a ton of RPG elements. So we're just going to get right into it here. We're going to go on a, a mission in the command center. So there's like a visual novel engine built into this game. So you get all these awesome story elements going on in the game. And then I'm going to get you guys to the gameplay here. Just a minute. So this is kind of the very beginning. Uh, I have another character that I've played about three hours on. And it's a little bit farther in, but this is a pretty much a fresh, brand new character. This is the second mission of the game. So we're going to run this mission. Um, I have chosen, there are three types of ships you can use. I have chosen the heavy ship for this particular one. Uh, so it's a little bit bigger, and it has this, like, tri-shot. So the cool thing about this game is that it's a shmup RPG hybrid. Uh, as much as that kind of sounds confusing. So what we have here is... I fly this ship, and the ship has, like, abilities. In the bottom there, you can see that there's a little grouping of four, list of four there, and those are my ship's abilities. Now, the one on the right is a heal that I, just, that I have just used, and the one on the bottom is a force lance that shoots out right in front of me, and oh, I just hit that ship. So, this is kind of classic side-scroller. Uh, space shooter action here, you know, the ships are flying at me or flying away from me and I have to blow them up and there's all kinds of crazy shit. There's a little bit of a bullet hell elements later on in the game right now, it's pretty chill. Uh, so you'll see I have a health bar and a shield bar. The shield bar is gray on the bottom left there. And the health bar is the pink bar. Now if I take some damage to my health like I did there, and then I use the ability that is on my B button, you will see that I have healed a little bit. So here we've got some some shots coming at us, we're gonna dodge these. And then we also pick up a bunch of loot. That's not loot, that's a bomb. Gotta watch out for those. But yeah, we can also pick up loot. So I'll use my heal. And if you look on the right side, you can see that there are two sort of mana bars almost. One of them is a combo bar, and one of them is like a, an, an energy bar. So if I use my my force lance to destroy that mine. You'll see that on the right, that blue bar goes down just a little bit. There we go. And as I don't, as long as I don't take damage, my shields will recharge. And then I can also see what I have in my inventory here. These are things that I've picked up. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to sell these once we go back. So this is the the, the most basic uh, ship, most basic beginning of the ship, and that was the first mission. So the missions are pretty quick. Uh, as you can see, I took a little bit of damage, but uh, not too much. Uh, had I died, I would have been sent back to the beginning. Now, the game has two modes. It has an easy mode and a hard mode. Uh, the easy mode lets you respawn after death, and the hard mode turns this into a permadeath roguelite. Uh, so you've also got some roguelite elements. So we've got a sort of rpg -esque, RPG shmup with roguelite elements. All right. And so it's, it's definitely a blending of genres, plus we've got this visual novel thing going on here. So, now we've come back from our mission, and we're gonna just take a look at the garage. Here you can see a little tip about, a little tooltip about ship classes. Uh, there's tons of tooltips popping up here, sorry about that, but... So, oh my goodness, new skills available, self-powered bubble, yes, thank you. So if we click here, we can actually change our ship just telling them about the new skills. It doesn't do this every time. It's doing this because this is the first, the end of the first mission, so it's just telling us everything that we have. Come on. There we go. Sorry about that. So, this is our ship's hold. We can see what's in the hold here. We can transfer into our stash what is in the hold. And these are items that we have picked up while we are out in the missions fighting. And once we transfer these to the hold, there's no fast way to transfer. You just have to kick, kind of click them and drag them. And then you can see that we have what we have here is different items around our ship, like we would have in an RPG for equipping items. So I'm going to equip this weathered light plate 
uh, in addition to these two other weathered plates. That's going to give me a little more armor. And then I also have this dual Gatling gun, which is going to give me more damage. So we will equip the dual Gatling gun over what we had before, which was the triple Gatling. So we will lose, uh, we will lose the extra shot that we had. So we won't be shooting three anymore. We'll be shooting two instead. Uh, and that's how that's how we upgrade our ship. We've got lots of different things we can upgrade. We've got our engines. Uh, this is our power cells. Uh, our thrusters. This is our shield. Over here we have uh, modules we can input, and then we have our pilot module. This is our gun, and then these are our armors. And we can see in a, in a little second here, we can see all the different stats for our ship. Resources, skills, defense, miscellaneous stats. And then every mission, uh, almost every mission at least, we will gain enough money over here. You can see there's a money, 881, to spend on new points. So I, you can get three different types of points. You can see it says next point and then there's a value there. This one is zero cents or zero dollars or whatever we're going to call the currency. So the structure increases your health and armor. Power increases your health and your skill power. And navigation increases your health and weapon damage. So. I'm going to spread us out uh, as neatly as possible here for now. Basically, uh, he just was saying that if we die, then we lose our ship and we don't get we we lose all of the stats that are on our ship. So, there you go. We're going to spend most of our initial money on these things and now we have unlocked the ability to use this railgun if we want. Um, it's not going to be something that I I don't like the railguns even though this is a rare drop. It's going to lower our DPS because it's going to shoot a lot slower. Um, in this game, there's a lot of enemies that come through, so shooting faster is better. We will change out this engine. Uh, we'll lose some armor. You can see we lose 10 armor by changing out that engine. But it makes us a little bit faster, and um, uh, the speed is better. Speed is very important. So now we're going to take a look at skills. So our, ship's ha our ship has four, uh, the ability to equip four skills and two passives. Now I have spent all of my money already, so we're not going to be able to get any skills. I don't think, uh, unless we can get configuration for free, yes we can. So we get the first level of the skills for free. And we again, we just equip them by dragging them down here. So now I can only equip one skill from each family, so what it's saying is these are basic active skills, advanced active skills, and auto skills. So right now, we can see we have the auto skill automatic retreat equipped, automatically instantly flee from the battlefield instead of being destroyed, you'll earn no credits. Use a manual retreat instead if you want to keep what you've earned so far in a fight. But we can also equip single impact, which is the next time we take damage and become invulnerable for one second, but an exchange of focus scores divided by two. And we can also, we cannot equip this yet, but when we have a thousand money, we can buy it. And then, so these are different abilities. This is what gives this game a sort of an RPG twist. And then we also have these advanced active skills, which we can also put on our bar when we have enough money to buy them and those are things like mines and a ring of fire and slow time and weapons skills. Now I believe we can only equip one of these so if I wanted to equip say this self-powered bubble right there I can still equip that but if I wanted to I don't have anything else to equip right now but if I, if I wanted to buy and equip simple dash I wouldn't be able to because I now have all four spots full that have to get rid of one of those. Alright so we're gonna go back and now that we've pretty much upgraded everything we can do, upgrade, we've spent most of our money. We're down to 56 space buckaroos. We're going to go over to the command center. And the command center is where we're going to get all our missions. And we've got two kinds of missions here. We've got a short mission called Smokescreen, which will just have us engaging enemies. And then we've got another short mission. It's the same mission, but this one has a new skill associated with it. So let's, let's do this one. This, uh, finishing this mission will grant us that simple dash skill so we don't have to buy it. It'll save us the hundred buckaroos. So you're going to see now that I only shoot two bullets, but each of those bullets is going to be slightly stronger. I also can't maintain a straight line of fire anymore, and then my bullets also spread out, which is kind of, oops, kind of nice and also kind of nice. I've also equipped my favorite ability in the game, which is called Conflagration. It is this ability right here, which allows me to sort of shoot out fire around myself and that fire shot oh I, I don't like this gun I'm gonna I'm gonna unequip this after this game um, I don't like this gun at all it's hard to shoot with so the conflagration skill allows me to create this ring of fire around myself that destroys everything uh, you can kind of hear in the background now the music's a little more chill it says focus up that's me getting that orange meter up there and I have enemies coming from behind so if we just 
fold ourselves in as these enemies as best as we can. We can use our our two active attacks here to kill a lot of these enemies. Now, killing more enemies obviously is going to result in more loot, uh, and more loot is going to result in more money. So at the top there, you'll see there's a running counter of how much money I have. And obviously, the more money we bring back with us, the better. Now, uh, most of that money is taken away at the end of the mission for quote-unquote taxes, uh, which I find kind of amusing. So I have a shield there I can equip, and that will allow me to block some of those bullets. And then my other active ability is, of course, repair. And then I have my favorite ability, the conflagration there. So you end up giving up a lot of that to taxes, which uh, is kind of funny to me, but you end up with uh, so if I come back with like seven thousand or eight thousand I'll focus up. end up with only a few thousand so you keep hearing it you should hear it in the background I keep saying focus up that's me getting that focus meter to a higher level and that's gonna let me ouch that's gonna let me use my abilities more often to have that focus meter up and that hurt and the idea is of course to take as little damage as possible and eventually finish the mission and now we have finished the mission So we'll go to the side there. If you want to point out one thing really quick, on the top up here, you can see there's those five bars. Those are actually a mission progress. They will show you how far you have gotten in the mission. All right, so now you see basic. we have our basic score, 7,600. We have our mission complete. Our share is only 10%, so we only got 965 space bucks. So we're going to go back to the command center, even though we probably cannot buy anything yet since we don't have a lot of space bucks. We did get another new skill. Uh, so, actually, let's go to the market. So, obviously we can pick things up from our stash. And we can sell things back and forth. Buy and sell, buy and sell, blueprints panel. And, of course, there's crafting, because what would an RPG be without crash crafting? So, right now we have this uh, weathered engine, which we definitely want to sell. So, we're just going to drag that right over here. We're going to sell it. And this is our triple Gatling gun. We don't want to sell that. Um, and... This railgun, we don't. We are going to keep that too. So let's take a look at what we have to buy. Uh, we already replaced our engine with a better engine. So we have the weathered heavy engine, the weathered light engine, and the weathered engine. So none of those are going to be good for us. Uh, power cells wise, I don't think we're going to find a better power cell than the one that we have now. Uh, thrusters. This weathered heavy thruster would be good for us. It would give us 11 extra armor. Uh, it will, however, reduce our navigation skill by one. Uh, same here. We have. A little bit more armor, lose our navigation skill by much more. So this guy, he is able to be bought because you can see, and oh, he's actually free. Okay, well we can we can buy that. That's for sure. Let's buy this guy. Drag him over to the stash. Drop him in the stash. And then in the shotguns, we have diff different guns here. We have uh, scatter lasers, single lasers, auto cannons, all kinds of different guns. Um, Let's see, this triple Gatling is 312 DPS physical, and this one is 342. Yeah, we'll take this one, and we can sell this one. I haven't really experimented too much with the different uh, different guns that are out there, but uh, I definitely will, will get a look at those later. Uh, here we have energy shields. Uh, we only have one that's more powerful than the one we have now, but we'll, we'll pick it up anyways. And these items refresh and get big, get more the way you go. Um, so these weathered heavy plates are 900 space buccarinos. So I'm only going to buy one. Oops, I hit back. Uh, so I'm going to make sure that there's nothing else we need to buy before I pick up that that there, that one there. This is a helmet for our guy. He picks up, you know, it'll help him with... So you can see it gives stat bonuses. Zero, st uh, zero strength, plus one primary hit chance. Weathered helmet. Yeah, so I mean this is also 900 space bucks. So I'm not really ready to buy that yet. And then here's those CPU modules I was talking about earlier. Let's go ahead and buy the armor plate because it's going to be the most uh, the most useful to us. So that's gonna that's gonna end us out probably mostly for the uh, what we can buy for now. So let's let's uh, take this plate and put it on. And let's actually let's try the railgun. You know I'm not a big fan of railguns. Usually they sh shoot one powerful projectile in a line. Um, let's give it a try, though. Um, we'll switch the triple Gatling back to triple Gatling if we can later. Uh, we've got a, a few upgrades here as well. We've got do a small shield upgrade, and we've got a small thruster upgrade. All right, so let's go back to the command center and let's launch our next mission. So 
So we only have one mission left, and that's buying some time. Uh, we're going through the story. We're tearing through story here. I'm not going to be reading the story off. Uh, just because the story is very good, and I've been reading it in my other playthrough. I encourage you to read it. Uh, it's a really cool story. I'm still only about halfway through the story. Um, on the right, in the last previous screen, you may have noticed that there was a listing of mission difficulties. I've only reached four, so it's I'm not even close. Alright, so there's our ship floating in the background there. We took some damage, and we're going to be in the foreground here, trying to blow up these ships. That was a little intro cinematic, so here we go, we're going to do the mission, buying some time. We'll press A to continue. So now you can see what the railgun looks like. It's sort of a, uh, a charge blast that fires. And it goes, it's, it's gimmick is that, I guess not gimmick, but it's cool thing is that it goes through enemies. So if we can line it up, Still not ready. like this, with multiple enemies at a time. We can hit more than one at once. I'm already taking damage, which is not good. There's a lot of enemies coming from behind, I'm not used to that. Pick up all this loot. What, I didn't actually bother to empty my loot last time, so... Uh, if your loot gets filled up, then you can just throw some loot out the airlock. And if you pick up uh, too many items and you just want to sort by rarity, you can like just bam, remove all commons. There we go, they went out the airlock. Um, obviously, that was just to demonstrate. So, see on the top there, you can now see the blue, sort of moving blue pieces. Those moving blue pieces are telling you how far I am in the level. Uh, which, they, this one is particularly a long level, and it's got two lock segments at the end. Which, uh, if I can finish all of the early segments without dying, I will get to the locked segments. So that's going to be our goal, uh, finish all those segments without dying. But it sort of goes uh, segment by segment, just so you can keep track of where you are. Uh, because it's a little bit hard to keep track of how far you are in the level and everything. Um, and it can definitely be a little frustrating to not know where, you're, where you are or what you're doing. Times like this, I really wish I still had a you know burst ca or a multi shot cannon like I had earlier. Uh, oh god, take some damage. In that case, because the multi shot would be really good for destroying multiple enemies at once. Uh, so right now I've kind of just got the force lance and the conflagration ability, and those two are not as good, uh, but we could still still do damage. So uh, as you can see with the member from if you remember from when we landed earlier we get 10% of whatever money I have let's activate our shield to get through those those guys there those bullets so we'll get 10% of whatever's at the top there so right now even though it says like 56,000 or 5,700 even though it says 5,700 right now we don't actually have 5,700 in fact we don't even have close to 5,700 at the moment um, well we actually have is much less than that uh, I'm trying to dodge all these bullets. Uh, we will only get 10%, so we would have only 600 of that. So the goal is obviously to get as much money as possible so that we can upgrade as much as possible. And these little items that you see me picking up in the middle of space help with that, those gems and things. All right, so now we're about halfway through. We've cleared another segment. I did take a little bit of damage. But not as much, I could have taken a lot more. If you listen really carefully, you can sort of hear a little a little sound every time I get through a part of the level. Oh geez, let's activate the shield here. This is a particularly difficult bit of the level. Um, those swarms of enemies are very, very weak, but they can do a lot of damage. Okay, so now she's telling me we're good to go, that I can just engage and go back. But I don't want to disengage and go back. I want to finish the mission. Uh, as much of it as possible, anyways, because I've got a pretty good amount of money. And I'd like to keep that money if possible. Oh, God. So we've got some parts floating here. Skill not ready. Right now I have about $800, so I'd like to get that up to 1000 if I could. 
As you can see, I am in the danger zone now, uh, where the danger zone is where it, uh, <laughs> oh god, this guy is really powerful. Um, danger zone is those extra zones that I was talking about on the top there. But this is sort of all extra bonus. Uh, if I can stay alive for a few more minutes, we're doing pretty well here right now. Of course, that can change in a moment, you know, a moment's notice. Um, just keep hitting that, that guy. There we go. He dropped three big pieces there. Sneak through there. This guy is super annoying. I killed him in my last playthrough as well. He's super annoying to, to fight. Got him though. So that's it. That's the end of the level. I completed it and I'll have just over a thousand uh, space buccarinos. Since they only will leave me with 10%, which is not bad. So let's let's fly to the edge of the level here and complete the mission. The game is frozen. My controller. Sorry guys, I'm having controller issues. I am playing with this as an Xbox One controller. It, they do recommend that you play with a controller. Um, with the gamepad. You can play it with mouse and keyboard, uh, it's a lot harder. So there you go, I'll take home 1400 space buckaroonies. Let's head back to the hangar and see what we can buy with those space buckaroonies. Uh, obviously we can buy skill parts there, of course. A new skill is available, Killing Streak Bounty. Uh, we can go ahead and buy, we can buy all sorts of, of things. Uh, if we look, we can, so we've got, we can buy uh, skill points or attribute points. We can buy advanced active skills. That one that we just unlocked was an auto skill. This one right here. Credit skills. Uh, so we've unlocked this guy right here, and we get him for free. We don't have to pay anything for him. And what that will do is killing enemies grouped in, in groups or quick succession will generate additional credits. The effect increases with the number of destroyed. So it's basically just a, a bonus for how many enemies we kill. All right, so here's our stash. Open our, our ship hold here. We've got a few things in this hold that maybe we can put them over here. I wish there was a transfer. Oh, there's this button right here. Maybe glowing transfer all. Hey, hey, look at that. She can be taught. So let's take a look at what we got. We have our dual Gatling gun, uh, which was much better than what we had earlier, which is much better than what we had before. I think I'm going to go ahead and go back to the dual Gatling gun. Just don't, I don't really like the dual Gatling gun. It's not my favorite weapon, but it's better than what I have now. Uh, we've got a new shield. It's a common shield, and it's slightly better than our current shield. It's going to reduce our armor a little bit, but it's going to give us more shield, which is fine. I'd rather have the shield. Uh, we have a weathered light engine, which is a little better than what we have now, so we'll equip that. Oh, uh, We do not have enough power. Okay, so we need to get more power. There we go. That's why we got to keep some money in reserve so we can upgrading. Uh, here's a helmet. I only have one, so I'll go ahead and equip that weathered light helmet better than not having a helmet at all. Uh, this is a double cannon. It shoots two instead of three. Uh, and this is a weathered heavy thruster. Uh, gives a little more armor, a little less navigation. I think we'll keep what we have now. Uh, weathered auto cannons, weathered auto plates. Yeah. I think we're going to go with what we have uh, for now. The shield is not quite as good as the one that we already have up. And then this scattered laser requires nine power. Um, I can probably buy my way up to nine power. And then we can equip the scatter laser, and let's just equip it for fun. So now, I, that, that will be all. I was planning on equipping some more skills. I'll show you really quick what that looks like. So, after you have enough money to buy them, you can buy additional skill uh, levels. So, like, the next level of Conflagration uh, will raise a lower energy cost uh, in our cooldown, and it will raise the amount of damage that's done. Uh, this is basically leveling up skills is the most important thing. And it, plus what I got. And then, of course, you can always buy these guys as well, these active advanced skills. Uh, though right now we are full up on skills, so um, we don't really need any more, uh, we don't really have room for any more at the moment, and we also have no more money. So let's go back out and let's go back to the command center and let's run one more mission, and just so you guys can see it. Uh, this is another di another story dialogue, so he's gonna run the story dialogue. The art in this game is so beautiful and everything just looks so good. I'm so pleased with how this game looks. Uh, this is just really 
considering what what it is. I mean, you know, for an indie game, it looks so good, and uh, it's just really fantastic. F plays fantastically. Uh, look at I mean, just look at this art. This is the the rift, uh, which is sort of like a a space. Uh, a space Moss Eisley style area where you can meet characters and meet not so savory characters and spend your time and where many of the elements of the story are told and there's of course this whole massive story that goes on my controller is once again disconnecting sorry about that guys this controller is a disaster Xbox One controller not very happy with its right now so these are all characters that are in the, the VN style the, v the story part of the game uh, and so they're gonna, they're just doing dialogue, story, dialogue, story, dialogue, story, dialogue. So now we're gonna get a choice between missions. Uh, what I was showing you the other day is we, what I was showing, trying to talk about earlier is we have these grades of missions. I've reached up to grade four on my other playthrough, and this is only grade one, and we're not even like halfway there. Uh, missions are graded by how between they how safe and dangerous, and you'll see that the color. So like this one is a slightly less safe than this one. So uh, let's go ahead and do this one, assessing the threat. Uh, the other one is, is a sort of a, a marathon mission, and it takes a lot longer, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this one, which is a little bit of a shorter mission. So to show you the different a different gun, so this is a spread laser, and I can keep this on forever. Um, it's a little hard to aim, but I can keep it on forever, and you can see that kill streak bonus is now active. Uh, this laser is scatters, but does a good damage and I can still use my conflagration while I'm using the laser and if you can actually get the laser to hit things it's an excellent weapon uh, it's just a little harder to hit with than would be something that's you know easier to aim since it sort of scatters all over the place and the beams only do damage to what they're hitting so if you can master it though it's an excellent weapon uh, excellent usage weapon so this is a, a shorter mission, which is why we're doing it. But if you see on the bottom there, that killing spree bonus is active. We are getting more, uh, more health now. It's seven six. We have to kill something in the next five seconds. It's on, or it's on cooldown rather. Five four. There we go. So just like uh, in your RPGs, you'll see there's a cooldowns for stuff. And I already have like five thousand space bucks because uh, that kill spree is really giving me a lot of money uh, when I kill stuff. So. Now, once again, we have an optional part portion to this mission. Uh, let's use our shield here. You can see that last little bit there is the optional bit, and uh, you can tell that because it has a little exclamation mark on it, so we can finish the mission with no penalty and not have to worry about it. These guys actually spawn little guys, which is super annoying. Um, it's a lot harder to kill the big guys than, it used, than I would like it to be. Uh, this game's difficulty ramps up immediately uh, as I got to higher levels and did not have item the items I needed. The game was absolutely brutally difficult, uh, and it doesn't really let you go back and farm, so you kind of have to hope for the best. And you can get a new ship after you blow up your ship, but it is a uh, roguelike in the sense that you lose all of the stuff that was on your ship and you lose all of your ship's abilities, so you have to go back and rebuy them all, which is... Uh, means that there's a lot of a lot of angry time in this game for Fiona Fox. Um, I started on hard mode. I try to play a lot of games on hard mode when I get them, especially if they're, you know, if it's an attraction of the game that it's extra hard. I try to play the game on hard mode. Uh, so this one is, you know, super extra mega hard mode. Uh, I put it on the the no respawn hard mode, and I died in like level seven or so, like the seventh level I played. Um, I think that's gonna about wrap it up, guys. So this has been. Drifting Lands. It's a really fun shmup, space shmup RPG hybrid with a little bit of visual novel on the side. Uh, so let's take a look at what we got in our hold. We only got one item this time. And I think you guys have seen pretty much everything there is to see now about the game. Uh, the only thing that's really left is to take a look at the fact that there is a set of online leaderboards. Uh, so you can play this game competitively, and you can see that these are the the world high scores, and then we also have uh, friends high scores. I don't have any friends that play this game, but if I did, there you go. So these are the missions, First Blood, No Time to Lose, Living on the Edge, etc., etc., etc. So those are the, the challenge missions that you can do. And uh, that's going to wrap it up, about wrap it up, guys. There's not really much else to see. Uh, this is the leaderboards over here. This is the market, the hangar. We've got a little news over here. This is just going to tell us what uh, the Drifting Lands is now out. It's a little news story. Some character dialogue. And this is, you know, just a general hangout area. 
Uh, I just, I want, you know, this is such a beautiful game, and it's, I've really been surprised. Um, definitely give it a look. It's only like 15 bucks on Steam, and uh, it's really definitely worth a try if you're into shmups or, or space games at all. Um, it's really quite good. Thanks very much for watching. This has been Fiona Fox with a first look of Drifting Lands from Kitsuga